in this video we're going to be looking at topic 1a states of matter and this is for the triple content of this topic and this is part of the IGCSE chemistry course from NXL. So the outcomes in this topic are all new to the specification um, for the 91. So they are looking at the term solubility and what this actually means, how we can plot and interpret solubility curves, and then there's also a practical that you might likely carry out that is looking at investigating the solubility of a solid in water. Now, because this is a new statement, there are no past paper questions, but we will look at some example questions of things that could come up in the exam. So first of all, let's start by looking at what we mean by solubility. So from your double knowledge, you should know what the words solute, solvent and solution mean. But just in case you can't remember, we have a solid or a solute dissolving in a liquid or the solvent, and that will form a mixture which is known as a solution. Now, the solubility of any solid is determined using a specific solvent, and that solvent is typically water. But we have to make sure that we are aware that the solubility is dependent on temperature. So we have to carry out each experiment for solubility at a specific temperature. And we define it, as you can see on here. So we've got the mass of solute, which must dissolve in 100 grams of solvent at that temperature to form a saturated solution. So when we have a saturated solution, what we mean is that we can have no more dissolving. So solubility is all about very specific temperatures. So if we're looking at the solubility of sodium chloride and water at 25 degrees or at room temperature, what we can see is that if we have 100 grams of water, we can dissolve approximately 36 grams of sodium chloride. So then we, that is as formed our saturated solution. So that's where we've got as much dissolved solid being as possible so we can dissolve no more. And what you would see is that you get some undissolved solid at the bottom of your beaker. That's how you know that you've formed this saturated solution. So as we mentioned, we can calculate the solubility of a substance because we're talking about using specific numbers here. So anytime that we can put a number to something, we can do a calculation. And we use the following equation in order to calculate the solubility of a substance. So we have the mass of the solute, so the mass of our solid, divided by the mass of the solvent, which is our liquid or typically water. And then we multiply it by 100 because we are looking at 100 grams. And this value for solubility will change depending on the temperature. Now, a question in an exam could ask you very simply to give, calculate the solubility of a substance by giving you some information. Now, they're not going to make it as easy as here's the mass of the solute, here's the mass of the solvent. They're going to make it a little bit tougher. And what they will do is give you something that looks like this. So we have the mass of the evaporating basin or our what looks like a little bowl, if you've never seen an evaporating basin before, but I'm sure you will carry out this experience a similar experiment to this with your teacher. So we can take that mass and when we can also have the mass of the evaporating basin plus the solution and then the mass of the evaporating basin plus the crystals. Okay and what we want to do is from that information we want to determine what is the solubility. So to get the solubility the first thing that we need to work out is what is the mass of the solute or in other words what is the mass of the crystals? And we can do that using the information on the previous slide because we know the mass of the basin and the crystals is 38, but we can take away the mass of the basin. So if we do 38.00 subtract 25.72, we get an answer of 12.28. And that is my mass of my solute or my mass of my crystals. I can also work out my mass of my solvent. So what was I dissolving them in? Well, in this case, it's going to be my mass of water. And again, I can look at the information. Well, we were able to see that if we have the mass of the basin and the solution, it was 58. But when we removed all of the water and evaporated it, we went down to 38. 
So very simply, we do 58.00 minus 38.00, and it gives us a value of 20.00 grams. Notice that I'm keeping everything to two decimal places. This is very important when you're doing a calculation. You need to always make sure you're using the same number of decimal places or same number of significant figures all the way through. So we're not just writing out the zeros for fun, we're writing them out to make sure that everything has the same number of decimal points. Then I can calculate the solubility. So I take my mass of my solvent, which was 12.28, I divide it by my mass of, sorry, my mass of my solute was 12.28. I do my mass of my solvent, which is 20.00, times by 100, and that gives me an answer of 61.4 grams per 100 grams of water. And that is my solubility. And you can see that's the answer that we have here. Now, what we can also do is we can build what's known as a solubility curve. And a solubility curve is basically showing the solubility of a substance at different temperatures. So we are going to have the temperature as my x-axis because this is my independent variable. Remember, independent variable being the thing that I change because it starts with an I. So I'm changing the temperature. And then my y-axis is going to be my dependent variable. And that is the solubility because the solubility is going to be dependent on me changing the temperature. And what you can see is you can carry this out for a number of different substances. And we do lots of experiments at different temperatures and we figure out how soluble each the substance is at each temperature. So we've got KNO3 which is potassium nitrate versus potassium chloride, KCl. And we can see that they are very different in terms of their solubility. But what we do notice is that we see an increase in solubility as the temperature rises. So that's the general trend that we will always see. As we increase our temperature, our solubility is also going to increase. If you think about that logically, if you're making a cup of tea and you put sugar in it, when it is hot, it is going to dissolve. And then once you're drinking it, if you take your time and it is getting cooler, what you might see is some of that sugar, if you put in quite a lot, um, coming out at the bottom. And it's because the solubility of the sugar is, is decreasing as the temperature is decreasing. And we can work out what mass of crystals we would get if we cooled a saturated solution using a solubility curve. So if we look again at an example question, we would be given a table of results similar to this. Now notice that I've got temperature of 10, 30, 40, 70 and 90, they have purposely not given you equal temperatures and the reason for that is you're going to typically use your value or use your solubility curve to work out one of those missing values but don't let that affect how you plot your graph. Remember your graph must always have regular scales. And each of these temperatures we have a solubility and we can use our graph or our curve to tell us a number of different things. So this is an example of my solubility graph. So I've got my temperature along the x-axis, my solubility along the y-axis, and I've got my points plotted. And of course, I've done this online um, using um, Google Sheets, and it has given me the line already drawn. Most likely, you will have to draw this out by hand in class. But you should be getting, of course, the same answers because there's no difference here. So we want to use the curve, first of all, to find out the solubility at 50 degrees Celsius. So I go to 50 degrees on my graph and I draw a line between 50 up to my line. And then I draw a line going from there across to my y-axis. Now, of course, you are going to have a uh, a ruler when you do yours and yours is going to look much better than mine did there but you can see roughly that we get an answer and our answer is let's say at 50 degrees 
my solubility is 42.5 grams per 100 grams of water. Okay, now of course, depending on how you've drawn your line of best fit, you may be slightly different, but it should be in and around that area. And that would be your answer for part one. Part two asked us to work out the maximum mass that will dissolve in 50 grams of water at 40 degrees. So what we have to do is we then have to go back to our curve and we look at what well, at 40 degrees, you can see that you are going to dissolve 40 grams of water. And this, these are nice, easy numbers. So at 40 degrees, you're going to dissolve 40 grams in 100 grams of water. Now, if I half that amount of water down to 50 grams, I can then half my value and I'm only going to be able to dissolve 20 grams of my salt or my potassium chloride salt into 50 grams of water. Now, the way that you actually carry this out, because these are very simple numbers, is you use the following rearrangement of your solubility calculation. So to get your maximum mass, you do the mass of water divided by 100 multiply by the solubility value. So if you've calculated the solubility value, then you would be able to use that to help you find out the maximum mass. In this example, it's very simple number, so we've not had to do that. We can just simply half our number, but this is the equation that you would use if you needed to. And then for number three, it has asked us to figure out the temperature at which crystals would appear if a solution containing 51 grams of solid is used. So again, we go back to our curve and we're looking for 51 grams, which is approximately here. So I would draw a nice straight line and I would see that I get a point here and I go down to my graph or my axis and I see that that is 80 degrees. So again, just to run through what I did there, I looked at the solubility. So at 51 degrees, then it would stop, so at 51 grams, it would stop being a saturated solution at that point, and we would start to see crystals forming. So we'll go to 51 on our y-axis. We travel to the line, because the line is where the solubility is, or where it is at a saturated solution, and I come down to my x-axis, and I read off the temperature. So my answer would be at 80 degrees crystals would form. And you can see here that we've got the answers and just going into a little bit more detail than what I explained there because it's easier to kind of write it out but giving us the same information that we just figured out using our solubility curve. Now as I said there is no past paper questions for this because it is a new statement in the specification but please feel free to check out the sample papers because there may be some questions in there or ask your teacher if they can provide you some practice questions or alternatively, of course, use the textbook. Hopefully that's made sense and that's everything for topic 1A, States of Matter for the triple content. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below and hope to see you back soon.